So in this lecture on macroeconomic demand factors, we will be talking about how changes in the population size or age distribution can affect macroeconomic demand in various markets. Now it is important to note that the change in population size here has a different effect to the change in age distribution. So we will look at each different factor one by one. So let's look at population size first and the age distribution second. Okay. So examining the normal supply and demand graph, we have uh, the x-axis as, as the quantity demanded at every price and the y-axis the price. And we assume that the supply curve is upward sloping and the demand curve is downward sloping as per usual. And now in this market for bread, for example, we can see that the market is at equilibrium where P1 corresponds to Q1, or the quantity demanded at P1, and the buyers are happy and the sellers are happy because everything in the market is being cleared at this point. So this is at equilibrium, this market is at equilibrium E1. So assuming that the population has decreased for whatever reason, so the population has decreased. And this can be due to, you know, slower birth rates, slower birth rates, uh, slower immigration rates or greater emigration, so moving out of the country. Uh, also maybe higher death rates. This would all affect the population growth. So the population size has decreased for whatever reason. Now we talked about how income levels or changes in income levels would not affect bread that's because bread is a necessity. And this means that people will buy bread no matter what. And even if you have maybe a higher income, you might buy gourmet bread. But in, in the general sense, people would have to buy bread to survive. And so this means that changes in income levels, as we talked about in the lecture on how uh, income levels or wages affect demand, does not actually affect the market for bread. But however, since everybody in the population buys bread, because the population size has decreased, we can talk about this as being a shift to the left of the demand curve. And this means that the quantity demanded at, at every level price is lower. So because there has been a shift to the left of the demand curve, we can see that there is also a corresponding shortage or surplus in production at point Q2. So we can see that because now this is the original supply curve and this is the demand curve, we can see that there is a surplus in supply because supply is supplied here at Q1 and demand is demanded here at Q2. And this is because everybody in the population is demanding fewer loaves of bread. And so what happens to producers here is they realize that there has been a surplus in production and so they will cut down production because at the end of the day, they are having inventories they have to stock, and that costs money to store bread. And because you can't store bread, they will have to destroy bread. And destroying bread also costs money, and it costs money to make. So they're, they're, they're not minimizing costs at the moment. So they realize, due to the um, forces of the free market, that they will uh, respond to consumer demand and decrease their supply. And so here at this point, they will reach a new equilibrium price at point PE, which corresponds to a new equilibrium quantity demanded at point QE. Now what happens to demand here is that originally they were uh, demanding at this price P1. And because now they see that the price is slowly decreasing, they will also increase their quantity demanded. And this is because they consumers want to maximize their, um, their productivity or they want to maximize their utility uh, by by spending their money to their to the wisest or best outcome, and so we're assuming that some people may can choose to forego bread because the price of bread can be very high, and they could say eat oats or cereal for breakfast as an alternative. But in most pe most cases, people would desire bread as a staple food in their diet. So what happens is when the price decreases, people will start to increase their spending. So firstly, we will exhibit a change, a decrease in demand because of a shortage in bread or a decrease in demand and then when the price of the bread decreases we will 
see that there also will be a corresponding increase in the quantity demanded at the price level. So now they have reached a new equilibrium point here at E2. So that's how a change in the population size or decrease in the population size may affect the market for bread. So the same analysis goes if we were to experience an increase in the population size. So if there's an increase in the population size, we would expect that the demand curve would shift to the right and the same analysis would go for the price. So the price would then, so the uh, suppliers would experience a shortage in production and therefore they would increase price that would result in an expansion in supply instead rather than a contraction and therefore the demand will move from Q2 to Q1 and then back to QE. Okay, so that's the analysis of how population size or changes in the population size might affect uh, the demand or the market for bread. Let's look at the second example here. Let's look at how a change in age distribution might affect the market for say concert tickets this could be an example that very might well pop up look at concert tickets and so what this one what, what the underlying assumption is is that the generally the older we get the less likely we are we are going to go and attend con concerts and so assuming that the supply of concert tickets is generally pretty elastic and so we have a demand curve which is also down sloping initially in the precondition the market determined the price set for a specific concert ticket at p1 and also the quantity demanded corresponds to q1 that, that's the same for every the start of every point of demand demand supply analysis is that we determine the original equilibrium point at e1 okay so now we have concert tickets because now we have a Say unless we have a an aging population, and that's well, that's what Japan's experience at the moment, an aging population. And by this I mean that the overall that the general age has been increased. The average age of people has been increasing. What this means is that people are moving away from you know these youthful um, concert tickets. They, they're not they're not going to buy as many concert tickets, and therefore there will be a decrease in the demand for concert tickets. Because at every price level, there will be a lower quantity demanded. And so what happens is that the price of the concert ticket, because we can see that there has been a surplus in concert tickets, so we can see that the now the quantity demanded is at Q2, while the quantity supplied by producers is at Q1, at the original equilibrium point. So now we can see that producers will see that at the end of the day there will be excess concert tickets remaining and so to get rid of these concert tickets to maximize or minimize their opportunity costs and maximize their living standards they will decrease the price and slowly the market will move towards a new equilibrium at this point here so at this point they would correspond to a price at p2 or pe for equilibrium and qe so at this new point we have E2. So as we see that the that the producers will contract supply from E2 to E1, we can also experience or examine a expansion or a movement along the demand curve from here from Q2 to QE. And now that's how they reach the new equilibrium point at E2. So we can see how a change in the population size or a change in the age distribution may affect two different markets. But let's examine if there has been an age in population. How will that affect the market on bread? Well, firstly, personally, I don't believe it would because older people, they still require bread to survive. And so the demand for bread being a very elast inelastic good would not change due to an age in population. And similarly, if the population size, however, increase we can assume that maybe possibly that the that the population size or the population distribution would have increased at every level of every every age level so that means there will be more 18 year olds at every population level and there will be more 19 year olds in the economy and by that this will result in an increase in demand for constant tickets so the demand curve will shift from d1 to say d3 and this is due to result of an increase 
in population size. So as we can see, the population size may affect both the markets for bread and consoles, but age distribution may not affect the market for bread as it does affect the market for concerts. So this is very important to note, that changes in certain demand side conditions may not affect the market for other, for, for different markets where other demand conditions such as the population size may affect the demand conditions for all markets. And so to recap, how a change in population would increase, generally speaking, if the good is a want, then a change in the population size would generally mean a increase or a decrease in the demand or a shift to the left or shift to the right. And this would therefore either increase or decrease the equilibrium quantity and price at which the producers produce. And so also change in the age distribution may or may not affect every market, but assuming that it does affect markets, so in the, in the case of concert tickets, and an increase in the general age or the average age of a nation that will result in a decrease in demand for concert tickets or if there is a decrease in the general age of the nation that there could be an increase in concert tickets or demand for concert tickets from D1 to D3.